What's important there is I, I, I don't believe that the general public has a real understanding that how dire this crisis is and how important uh, a strong free press is to our society. I think even though we understand it in some level, we don't fully comprehend what we've lost. And the church does not want them to be found. So, they are not there. Mitch, are you telling me that the Catholic Church removed legal documents from that courthouse? Look, I'm not crazy. I'm not paranoid. I'm experienced. Check the docket. You'll see. They control everything. Everything we're sort of revealing has been reported on, so it's well documented. Yes. But we were kind of telling, uh, really, the story of high-level journalism. <laughs> Uh, about a, a, a group of uh, fearless reporters and editors who went after a story and really had no idea just how big uh, or what the repercussions of it would be. It was just a, a great example of uh, high-level local journalism that had a, a global impact. Josh Singer, my co-writer, and I went to Boston again and again and again and again to sit and talk with them. First with them and then with a sort of a wider net of uh, former reporters and publishers and editors and lawyers and uh, academics and everyone else we could sit with in Boston who could maybe help us uh, capture uh, what the uh, culture environment was at that time. It happened in the most Catholic of American cities, right? Boston, arguably, but a very, very Catholic city where the church was very strong and cardinal law had great sway and power. But these journalists were so embedded, so connected to the community, they cared so much. But we, we gotta go with this now. No, I'm not gonna rush the story, Mike. But we don't have a choice, Robbie. If we don't rush to print, somebody else is gonna find these letters no. and butcher the story. Joe Quimby from the Herald was at the freaking courthouse. What do you think the industry needs to do to really um, become, I guess, relevant to the masses again? Um, hopefully, there will be some sort of innovation um, that will combine uh, legacy journalism and new media, uh, combine some, make some, come up with a, a financial model that, that works, but something has to happen. Um, I just don't think we've cracked it yet. Uh, but look, there are some, still some very great national papers. There's some great, uh, you know, metros still alive, but they've certainly taken a hit. If, if not, you know, certainly every, every newspaper has had a cut, make tremendous cuts. So, um, it's, you know, someone said to me recently, it's a great time to be in local corruption. And uh, I think there's probably some truth to that. Pope Francis's visit to the U.S., it was like a rock star. Uh, yeah, made uh, quite a splash. Yeah, it, yeah. it did, with yeah. Catholics and non-Catholics. Yeah. How, how do you think that has um, evolved the... Uh, image of the Catholic Church and, and Pope Francis as a character. Well, I think it helps the image, certainly. It's great for PR, right? Anyone can say that. The press that guy got was pretty terrific. And I, honestly, I think he's a pretty forward-thinking person to an extent. We'll see. Uh, but actions speak louder than words. The church has never changed their approach to this. They, they make sort of these overtures and they say the right things, as Francis has, but until they really do something, uh, there's still going to be a lot of kids endangered. And that's the really uh, terrifying aspect of it. If this film raise, raises awareness on the issue and gets people talking about it, then we, as storytellers, I think we've done our job.